Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be doing some nursing diagnosis and some nursing care plans for pneumonia. So we just finished the concept map and now we're going to do about three care plans. But if you go to the website, you'll notice that um, we have about five more. So let me see if I can pull that up real quick. So this is uh, nursestudy.net. You would just type in pneumonia here, and then you would have even more um, care plans um, for your um, studies. Um, the links to all of this will be below, so you can actually download the concept map and the care plans together. And then, you can, of course, there will be a link to the article below, too, so you can go ahead and um, just use these uh, as you need them. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the first uh, care plan. So as we remember, pneumonia is an infection of one or both of the lungs. It could be caused by bacteria, viruses, or fungi or fungi, however you want to describe it. So for our nursing care plan uh, number one, uh, we're going to do impaired gas exchange. So subjective data, which is what the patient reports, will be reports difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, expressions of feeling tired or weak. And the objective data is going to be the data that we can see or measure. Um, so uh, use of accessory muscles to breathe, um, abnormal respiratory rate and rhythm, abnormal um, ABG values, decrease O2 sat, uh, usually below 90, presence of adventitious, adventitious lung sounds like uh, crackles and wheezes. Our nursing diagnosis would be impaired gas exchange related to alveolar capillary membrane changes as evidenced by hypoxemia, abnormal ABG levels, and the use of accessory muscles for breathing. Then when we want to go to the goal or the expected outcome, uh, we would say the patient will demonstrate improved gas exchange as evidenced by ABG values will um, return to normal limits for the patient. O2 sats will be above 92%. Uh, normal respiratory rate and rhythm without the use of accessory muscles um, by discharge to the of the hospital. So our nursing uh, interventions and rationale, the first one would be monitor the respiratory rate and rhythm every four hours. Um, the reason for this is regular monitoring helps detect early deterioration in the patient's status. Uh, administer O2 therapy as prescribed. Um, adjust the flow rate to maintain uh, O2 sat above 92%. So oxygen supplementation helps to alleviate hypoxemia. And it's critical to ensure adequate tissue oxygenation and uh, supporting overall respiratory function. Encourage deep breathing exercises and use of uh, the IS, our incentive spirometer, um, at least every two hours while awake. Some facilities may say every four hours. Um, so just follow your, your facility's guidelines for that. And these exercises will help promote lung expansion, facilitate gas exchange, and prevent atelectasis, which is common in patients with decreased mobility and shallow breathing. So when we're done, um, our evaluation should match our expected outcome, okay? So ABGs are within normal limits, reflecting adequate gas exchange. Uh, they maintained an oxygen level above 92%, indicating effective oxygen therapy. And respiratory assessments showing normal rate and rhythm with no additional use of accessory muscles. So that's our first nursing care plan. For our nursing care plan number two for pneumonia, we're going to do ineffective airway clearance. So it'll be ineffective airway clearance related to increased production and viscosity of secretions as evidenced by abnormal breath sounds, difficulty in expectorating sputum, and frequent coughing. So our subjective data, again, this is the data that the patient reports that you can't really see, but it's going to say they uh, report uh, difficulty expelling phlegm. They're expressing feeling of chest congestion, complaints of fatigue associated with coughing. And the objective data is going to be what you see, 
which is audible rattling sounds or wheezes noted on auscultations when you're listening with your stethoscope. Frequent coughing with thick, tenacious sputum. Uh, increased respiratory rate. Uses of, use of accessory muscles for breathing. Now remember that tenacious sputum can be um, either green or yellow. Um, green is usually more indicative of uh, pneumonia. Uh, our expected goal will be the patient will demonstrate effective airway cl clearance as evidenced by ability to cough up sputum effectively, uh, clear breath sounds on auscultation, normal respiratory rate, and use of accessory muscles by discharge. Um, our nursing interventions and rationales. We're going to assess the breath sounds at least every four hours, monitor for any changes in areas of decreased airflow. And the rationale for that will be regular assessment of lung sounds. It helps to identify the areas of congestion and effectiveness, and, and it's aimed at clearing those secretions. We want to encourage hydration. We want to thin those secretions out. They're easier to cough up. So with at least two to three liters of fluid per day, unless contraindicated, um, rationale, adequate hydration thins pulmonary secretions, making it easier for the patient to expectorate them and clear, the, clear it for the airways. Teach and assist the patient in performing chest physiotherapy, um, including postural drainage and chest percussion every four hours while awake. This really helps um, loosen the secretions. That along with the fluid will help them expectorate and it'll make it easier for them to breathe. Um, so chest physiotherapy enhances gravity's effect on lung drainage and increases the efficiency of cough mechanisms to clear mucus from the airways. On our evaluation, uh, we have uh, effective removal of sputum with less effort, clear breath sounds on subsequent auscultations, and maintenance of a normal respiratory rate and rhythm, indicating easier breathing and reduced reduced workload of the breathing. On our pneumonia care plan number three, um, we're going to do activity intolerance. And our subjective data is going to be uh, patient reports feeling weak and tired. A lot of these are just the, kind of the same. Uh, complaints of shortness of breath during minimal exertion. A uh, patient expresses concern about inability to perform daily activities. And that's just because they get so short of breath. Uh, while they're trying to perform them. What we're going to notice um, is increased heart rate and respiratory rate with any activity. We're going to observe the fatigue and pausing for breaths during activities and decreased saturation levels noted uh, on pulse oximetry during activities. Um, our whole care plan is going to be activity and tolerance related to imbalance between oxygen supply and demand as evidenced by respiratory and heart rates with activity, increased respiratory and heart rates with activity, uh, fatigue and reports of shortness of breath. So our goal and expected outcome for this nursing diagnosis will be the patient will uh, demonstrate increased tolerance to activity as evidenced by participation in daily activities without excessive fatigue or shortness of breath, dyspnea, maintenance of heart rate and respiratory rate within the patient's normal limits during and after activity, oxygen saturations will uh, be above 90% during uh, activity and by discharge. Our nursing rationale will be assess the patient's baseline activity level and tolerance before starting any activity and tailor activities to the patient's current ability. Uh, the rationale will be understanding the patient's baseline helps to set realistic goals and prevent overexertion, which can exacerbate symptoms and delay recovery. Uh, intervention number two, uh, gradually increase activity is tolerated, uh, starting at passive range of motion exercises, progressing up to sitting up, standing up, and walking. We start moving that body and, and start uh, getting to the point where we can start help get rid of some of these excretions. Um, the rationale would be a gradual increase in activity in building endurance uh, and strength safely reduces the risk of exacerbation of symptoms. 
And finally, number three, um, we're going to monitor the vital signs before, during, and after activity, adjusting activities based on the patient's tolerance and response. Um, and the rationale for that would be close monitoring ensures that activities do not overwhelm the patient's capacity, which could lead to deterioration of clinical status. And our evaluation for this uh, final nursing care plan will be uh, engagement in progressively more strenuous activities without significant increases in heart or respiratory rates, reports of reduced uh, fatigue and ability to perform activities of daily living without dyspnea, and consistent oxygen saturations above 90% during the activities showing adequate oxygenation. So these are our three nursing care plans on um, what the three nursing diagnosis. These are available for download for you. The link will be below and also um, our concept map um, that we did will also uh, be in that download. So this is Nurse Anna from nursestudy.net and I hope you enjoyed this small little session about pneumonia and I hope you have a very good week.